Welcome back to our video series, Drawing with Inkscape. In this video, I'm going to go over some of the advanced techniques for using Inkscape. So let's start with the different ways the diff that we can do pasting or the, the pasting tools. To start, we have an object here that I can select, and then I can cut that object by using Control X, and then wherever my cursor is currently pointed to, if I do a traditional paste, control V, the object will be pasted where the cursor is. And if I want, I can do multiple objects that way. Now, if I want to use another tool, for example, I want to put the object back to where it was before, I could of course do an undo or I can come over here to the edit menu and I can do paste in place. Paste in place remembers where the object was cut or copied from and when I click on that you see I have now an object that is back in the original position that I had cut from. Now let's take our object and make some changes to it. So I'm going to change the color and I'm also going to add a stroke. If you remember when we talked about color and fill, the fill is what's inside the object and the stroke is the outline around the outside of the object. So I can insert a stroke here or I can double click on the fill stroke and it brings up the, the stroke menu. So I can say, okay, I want to make a stroke here that is a different color from black. So we can go to the wheel and let's pick something that we'll easily see. For example, um, the uh, blue here. And let's then also use a stroke style that's wider so that we can um, see it better. So let's make this increase. And as I increase this, you see that the outline of the object gets thicker when I increase the width. So let's increase the width here. And so now you see I have a object with a stroke here. And now to demonstrate what we're doing with the paste tool, let's make a copy of this object. And then let's go over to edit. And we want to do a paste style. So let's click a different object and then we'll do paste style and you'll notice when I click on this again the and click on paste style the style of the object that I copied gets copied over to the new object now I can show something else that's happening here let's change the size of this object and then while this object is selected let's go again to paste style and you notice that the styles copied but not the size now I can also do a paste size and if I change that Notice now my object becomes the same size as the object that was copied. Or I can just do a paste width. Let's change this again first to be bigger. So you see. And I choose paste width. And it copies the width, which was no different. So you don't see anything. Paste height. That changes. So now it copies the height of this object or we have other options here paste size separately paste width separately and paste height separately so if you look at all of those you can see different ways that you can work with the paste tool all right the next tool i'm going to demonstrate 
is the draw freehand tool. So I click on that tool and I can draw anything freehand. So for example, I can attempt to draw my name or if I'm a better artist than that, I could draw a happy face. As you can see, I'm not a very good artist, but when you happen when you use this tool is it allows you to make any shape you wish and it continues until you stop and you release the mouse and then that shape will be drawn. So that's a very basic tool there. If you wish, you can do a click and drag and that will um, give you some restrictions here as you see what's happening it only allows me to do little dots here when I hold the, the click alright so um, that's basically all for the the freehand tool let's look next at the Bezier curve tool. So if I click on that, I clean off my um, canvas here. So to start, I click on the Bezier curve. And then when I want to draw some straight lines, let's start with some straight lines. I left click on the mouse at the starting point, And then each time I want to change directions, I click on the mouse like this. And then to end, I can hit the enter key. Another way to end is if I click on a bunch of straight lines and I close the shape, then it, in other words, come back to the beginning point, I will also end the shape or the, the path. So let's show that. All right, don't want to do curves yet. Actually, it doesn't matter. There, I show I closed the shape so it stopped. Okay so now let's look at drawing some curves with the Bezier tool. To do that you start at your starting point, hold your mouse down, left mouse button, and drag the mouse to the position where you want to stop and then release the mouse and then click on it again and hold the mouse down while you drag and you can see you can go up or you can go down and it's creating a curve while it's doing that so let's make a distinct curve and then release and hold the mouse down again release and hold the mouse down again and so on and you can keep drawing a curve that way to end, you just do the enter key as before, and you have your curve shape. Another thing you can do with the Bezier curve is if you have a path already selected, and then you hold down the shift key and you start drawing a new path. If you connect the new path with the old path, and as you see, it becomes all one object. Another interesting thing to use or learn how to use is when you're drawing a path and you accidentally draw something that you didn't mean to draw, which I do quite often, you can just hit the backspace key and it will delete the most recent node. So you notice I can back all the way to the beginning of my node, the, f the first node here, by just hitting the backspace. The other thing you can do if you want to uh, edit your object, you can click on the selector tool and double click 
on the object and then you'll see that you have all of your node points here which you can then move around and change as you wish so it's a convenient way to edit an object the other thing you can do is you can right click on an object and click on select this and then that object goes into edit mode and while you're in selector mode you also can move an object around you can um, let me get there you can resize the object just like you can with or the path just as you can with any other object um, so you can move the object around as well also to edit you can go to the edit paths by nodes and when you click on that you once again see the nodes that you can then alter as you see fit and then also when you're in edit mode here of a path you can also fill it in by using the fill color so here we click on that and as you see we have our object filled in now and as I noted before if you want to add stroke to it you can pick a stroke color so let's pick a greenish color see if that works and then let's um, stroke style again let's increase the width it didn't go to green it went to black but you see the point here you can add stroke to your um, to your object as well so let me go back to the color and let's actually select the color and now you see that we have our stroke in green in this video, we've been talking about the freehand tool and the Bezier curve tool, which both create paths that have nodes that we can edit. But we can also take some of our regular shapes that we were working with in other videos and convert those into paths as well. We haven't worked with the text tool for a while, so let's create a text box here. And I'm just going to put my name in here so we have text now if I click on this and I go to the path tool I can convert the object to a path now what happens is I can then click on a letter and if I go into the edit node tool I click on a letter and you see now the letter has nodes so I can edit those nodes I can play with different shapes here um, I can extend this to create interesting art with my my um, by modifying the nodes so let's just do something like this and now if I click out of there you see I've created from my name something that's artistic so you can take any object and convert it in a path and then you'll be able to edit the individual elements in that path uh, as a path with multiple nodes all right now let's look at what else is on the path menu I have here two objects that intersect with each other so if I go to the path menu I can click on Union and what Union does oh first I have to convert to a path so let's select both of these items convert to path and now if I click on the Union you see what happens is the two objects are joined and it becomes one one object another thing I can do is I can make the object difference Oops, sorry again I've got to select 
All right, and then go to difference, and you see the opposite effect here. The art, the circle has been cut out of the shape. Then we have the exclusion tool, which you see basically what happens is the intersection is cut out. Or we next have the division tool, which, as you see, keeps the stroke of the original object, but deletes the rest of the object. Or we have the cut path tool, which you can see the results of that. So I think this tutorial shows you the power of Inkscape. There's so much more we could go over. But the point here is to give you enough of a feeling so that you get brave enough to start trying some of the other uh, tools on your own and start to learn a little bit more about the guts of Inkscape and what you can do with it artistically.